scanning. Every time they pay for something, they, they do a certain type of scanning. So when somebody goes to the hospital with the coronavirus, they could detect where you got the virus and they could advise you that you've been around a person that has the coronavirus. And that's what they're doing in Wuhan um, to prevent the virus. But I don't think that that as much as I would like the coronavirus to start spreading, it's just, I don't know, that's just too much information on the people. And mm. Well, the balance here, and it's a tough one, yeah. Uh, we have to stop the spread of the disease. Yes. And, you know, if somebody is in a room with a whole lot of other people, a whole lot of people can get sick and some of them can die. And that we have to stop. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, you have a legitimate concern. Uh, we don't want to be having all kinds of information and, you know, on everybody in America. That's a violation of civil liberties. So how you get that balance is what we're kind of working on. But the yeah. main thing right now is to stop the spread of the disease. The other thing is to make sure that if somebody is in the hospital, they get the care that they need, yeah. that the doctors and the nurses have the protective equipment that they need. You know, we're, we're losing doctors and nurses who are becoming sick, sometimes dying because they don't have the kind of masks and other equipment they need to protect themselves. Right. And, you know, and it, and it really makes me sad because there are like some patients, like I, I know somebody that have somebody in the hospital right now with coronavirus and it's in it's, it's like they are in a very bad state and it makes me sad that they cannot have their family around them to nurture them to hold their hands and say like everything is going to be all right like not everybody trusts doctors not everybody trusts hospitals like you always want like somebody looking over and it's really sad that people some people like their last moments they cannot even spend it with their families, which is something that is really sad. It's really heartbreaking. Hi, husband. Oh, that's my husband. He's so burning my husband. Mm. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> and that's the type of things that, you know, it makes me sad. But right now, even though we are going through this coronavirus crisis, you know, people are still running. And I heard that you are endorsing now Joe Biden. And, you know, we're really not in the matrix. It's either Joe Biden or Trump. And one thing is, you know, a lot of people like like the youth, they don't really they don't really rock with Joe Biden because he's conservative. But the thing is that like, you know, I think Obama, right? I think Obama did like a smart move where he picked Joe Biden as his vice as his vice president because that's how he got the conservative vote. And just because there's so many people that are liberal like me and are a little bit more open with things, a lot of these states are not so I think that that's why, you know, Obama had Biden as vice president. And now he's endorsing him. And we're very excited to, um, to see that. I'm very excited. And I'm excited, too, that you are endorsing Joe Biden. And I will want you to tell my platform why are you endorsing him. Like, why Good. should we vote for him? Well, and a how of can reasons, we spread Carly. for us to vote for Joe Biden? Okay. First point is that when I announced that I was running for president. And there were like 18 people running. You know, what I said is, if I don't win, and I tried hard to win, uh, I will endorse the Democrat who wins because Donald Trump is, to my mind, the most dangerous president in the modern history of America. Uh, this is a guy who lies all the time. He doesn't believe in science. He downplayed this whole coronavirus, which has led to the deaths of many thousands of people unnecessarily. He doesn't believe in the Constitution. He thinks he's above the law. So this is a bad news guy that has got to be uh, defeated. And I will do everything that I can to defeat him. Uh, what I am also trying to do right now, Cardi, is to work with Joe to see that he becomes a more progressive candidate, right? Mm -hmm. In other words, uh, what I want to see him stand for, which he will, is to raise the minimum wage to at least 15 bucks an hour, to make sure that all of our young people have the opportunity to go to college regardless of their income, all right? To cancel student debt for a lot of people. I would go further in all of these areas than he goes but he is moving in the right direction. 
He's moving in the right direction on immigration reform. I think you will be pleased to hear what he has to say. I know the criminal justice and the number of people who are in jail today, often African-American or Latino, disproportionately, is an issue of concern to you. I think you'll be hearing him making some pretty strong statements about the need for criminal justice reform to make sure that we're not throwing young people into jail, but getting them the education and the jobs that they need. Yeah. And you know, even like right now, people that are in jail, they are not being protected as, as good as they should with this coronavirus. And one thing that baffles my mental, right, about number 45 is that, you know, when this coronavirus news was hitting and everything, he just kept blaming that this was a move of the Democrats to make him look bad, that everything, that everything uh, that the Democrats do is bad propaganda right. to make him look bad. But the thing is that, <laughs> honey, you don't need the Democrats to make to make you look bad. You make your own self look bad. There were so many um, chances that he had when inter when interviewers at interviewers asked him questions that he could have answered with the right answer that would make people be like, okay, he actually cares. And instead of him giving a right answer. He just shuts them off or just degrades them. And it's like, you don't need no Democrats to make you look bad. Sir, you make your own self look bad. You well, Cardi, he's about doing your that. You views on Twitter. When, and, he's and doing that, that right responsibility. now. responsibility. We are in this point because of him. He could have been avoided this in January. You know, a lot of people, I have a lot of love for the Chinese people, but a lot of people, when um, coronavirus was becoming trendy in america it was like around early january and a lot of people felt like it would have been racist or prejudiced to close the borders from china to america and i just feel like how come it wasn't prejudice when we when america closed the borders in west africa when the ebola virus was around and the ebola virus never even got here so that's my thing i feel like um they put capitalism, money, trading, goods before our health. And that's my problem. That's my yeah. issue. And instead of apologizing and giving us better, 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 I don't know, better things than a, a, a $1,600 stimulus check at one time, I feel like we deserve better because they messed up, apologize for messing up and do better for us, for the people. Not just well, that's one of the, the things about this guy is he doesn't apologize and he lies all of the time and he blames other people. Yes. So right now, because he downplayed the disease, he did not listen to the scientists. He did not use the Defense Production Act to tell private companies that instead of producing underwear right now or socks, they got to produce masks and we got to start producing ventilators and all that stuff. He didn't do any of that. So he blames other people. Right now he's blaming the World Health Organization which is an enormously important international organization that is trying to bring scientists and doctors together to work on a vaccine, to figure out the best way forward to treat this disease. He's now threatening to cut funding for them. Just the other day, you may have read that he threatened Dr. Uh, Vauci, uh, who has been telling the American people the truth. Trump does not like the truth. So he wants to fire this guy as well. So, you know, what we're trying to do now in Congress is go around Trump, make sure that our doctors and nurses have the equipment that they need, that we produce the kind of testing kits that we need so anybody in America can get the kind of tests they need when they need it. We're trying to make sure that every hospital in America has the ventilators and the other equipment uh, that they need. Uh, and we have to move very aggressively in all of those areas. Right. Woo! I'm so excited. I'm excited and I'm nervous. And I don't know, I'm so emotional because this makes me really excited. And I hope that all the viewers have a better understanding of what's going on. And I just really want to let my viewers know that it's and want to keep getting lied to because we are in for a ride. After everything goes back to normal again, I want to let people know that things are not going to be back normal again. Like this has impacted the economy and the 
back to normal again. There's countries that are affected by the coronavirus. They are not, you know, as wealthy as this country. Like the Dominican Republic, where my father is from, we got family members all constantly calling. It's it's terrible. All right, Claudia, let me just tell you one of the things that we're trying to do. Yeah, I'm sorry, okay, that's my one, mama calling. Trying to make sure. <laughs> that's my mom calling. Okay, say hello to your mom for me. <laughs> all right, we're trying to make sure uh, that everybody has all of the health care that they need right now. All right. So people are ending up in the hospital. They can't even afford the treatment they're getting. If their families get sick, you know, they don't have any money. We're trying to make sure that everybody has health care by expanding, having Medicare cover all health care bills. Second thing, very importantly, other countries around the world in Europe and elsewhere have done it. We want to make sure that people continue to receive their paycheck. In other words, right. you get laid off from your job. We want to make sure you continue to get your paycheck. In the airlines industry, we managed to protect 2 million workers, flight attendants, pilots, people in the airline industry. They will, for the next six months, whether they're working or not, continue to get their paychecks. We want to do that for every worker in America. That makes sense to you? Yes, that makes sense. But we just got to see if number 45 is willing to do that. <laughs> Well, we're going to make him an offer he can't refuse. We're going to put a lot of pressure, and I hope your viewers work with me and others in Congress in demanding that Congress stand up for workers, because a lot of people are hurting today. They're worried about getting evicted from their apartments. They're worried about not having enough food. They're worried about going bankrupt because they can't pay their debts. And Congress has got to be bold and stand up for those workers. Right. Well, we're going to stand up for those workers, and you're going to always have my support. And, um, well, you heard it from the man's mouth, Joe Biden, for 2020. Okay. okay. All right. Thank you, Carter. You keep up the great work. Thank Talk you. Talk to you soon. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Well, guys, you heard it from the source's mouth. You see what's going on out here. Better make the right choice. Mm-hmm.